Welcome to my channel, KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. It's summertime, and since I'm an ice cream addict, I thought I would share this very easy, egg-free, dairy-free, and also, by the way, a keto vegan almond butter and chocolate swirl ice cream recipe. Although in this video, I will show you how to make it with an ice cream machine, I will also explain how to make it as a no machine version and a third way, so please keep watching. The macronutrient ratio for each serving of this almond butter chocolate swirl ice cream is 4.3 to 1, with 7 grams of total carbs, 3.5 grams of dietary fiber, resulting in 3.5 grams of net carbs. But for those of you with a, a non-compressor machine, remember to first pre-chill your ice cream maker tub overnight by following your manufacturer's directions. However, if you have an ice cream maker with a built-in compressor, turn on the chill setting and set it to hard ice cream mode. Now, because the oil separated in most nut or seed butters, make sure that you give your almond butter a really good stir. And to make it easier, gather up all of your ingredients. Now, as for the coconut cream, I would like to give you a few tips. When you're buying coconut cream, make sure that you read the label and make sure that your coconut cream is unsweetened and preferably does not have gums or other added ingredients. You want it as pure as possible. The coconut cream does not need to be separated or chilled overnight. So before opening the can, give it a good shake and pour into a two cup measuring cup. Next, measure one cup of almond milk or any nut or seed milk of your choice. And then pour both the coconut cream and almond milk into a large mixing bowl. And of course, add your almond butter, which is what I'm using and making this ice cream with. But you could substitute with a nut or seed butter of your choice. This recipe works perfectly for any of these. And the last two ingredients you'll need are your finely ground sweetener and salt. Use a whisk to stir until the almond butter is well integrated into the liquid. And at this point, I'm going to add almond extract because this will give a little bit more flavor to your ice cream. And again, whisk until the almond butter is completely integrated into a homogeneous liquid mixture. And that's all there is to making an ice cream base. As you see, I have not used eggs or any dairy products. Now, wasn't that easy? Because it can be messy pouring from a bowl, I like to transfer this liquid into a measuring cup with a spout. It makes it much easier to pour into your pre-chilled ice cream tub. And here's a bonus suggestion. You can pour this liquid into popsicle molds. This makes amazing popsicles. If you don't have popsicle molds and you're about to buy some, I would strongly recommend popsicle molds that can be removed one at a time. Here is a really nice plastic one. This one has built-in handles and also catches any drips, which is great for kids. Or like this one, which is similar to the one that I have. It's a very sturdy stainless steel metal set. And the nice part is you can poke real popsicle sticks in it to make it look like you just bought the popsicle from a store. The, the links for the written recipe and everything I mentioned are in the description box, so please go down there to check them out. While my ice cream is churning, it usually takes about 15-20 minutes. I'm going to take the time to chop up my chocolate, add it to a bowl with my sweetener, which again is ground to a fine powder, and place this bowl over a bain-marie, which is also called a double boiler. When my chocolate is melted, I give it a good stir and set the bowl aside to cool to room temperature. Now, if you don't have an ice cream maker, as I mentioned, this can be made without an ice cream machine. You do everything the same up to the base, but instead of using an ice cream maker, pour the base contents into a freezer safe container, seal it with an airtight lid and place in the freezer for several hours or preferably overnight. All right, my ice cream machine has indicated that my ice cream is done. So I'm going to transfer half of it into a freezer safe container. Oh dear, I make all the videos by myself with one camera and I'm really sorry, but I forgot to turn on the record on my camera. So I'll just explain what I did. After transferring half of the ice cream from the machine to my container, I drizzled about half of the liquid chocolate over the entire surface of the ice cream 
and then use the chopstick to swirl it and integrate it into the ice cream. Next, I transfer the rest of the ice cream into the container and again drizzle the remaining chocolate on top and mixed it with my chopstick. To prevent the skin from forming on the surface of the ice cream, what I usually like to do is to place a layer of cling wrap directly onto the surface of the ice cream and then put my lid onto the container. Oh, before I forget, you can serve the ice cream that just came out of your ice cream maker and enjoy it as a soft serve or you can transfer the container into the freezer. To make it more scoopable, I would strongly suggest you leave it in the freezer for a two to four hours, depending on how hard you like your scoopable ice cream. And of course, the last thing you have to do that's really important is to scoop out your ice cream, serve and enjoy. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope my suggestions have been helpful to you. And do let me know if you like this almond butter ice cream recipe. Most of all, I hope you come back when I post my next video. I'm sorry, but one last favor. Please check out to make sure you're still subscribed and that your notification bell is turned on to all. Until next time, I hope you have a very happy and healthy day. Cheers.